Reward schedules refers to when the reward is offered as opposed to what it is or what it's based on. And the behavioral studies suggest that the structuring of reward schedules actually has significant implications for the psychological reaction that the rewards produce. There are several different possible reward schedules. Here are some of the major ones. The first one is the continuous reward. So if we look at time here on the x-axis and the activity that the player or person is engaging in, a continuous reward says, guess what? You get a reward each time. The reward is automatic. It goes for every incidence of the action. The second kind of reward is a fixed ratio reward. Fixed ratio says, if let's say that the activity happens a certain number of times, here I'm putting down the uh, times that someone does something. That might be visiting your website, or that might be uh, pushing a lever in some of these behavioral studies, uh, or it might be something involved in playing a game. But let's assume that there's this certain level of actions. Fixed ratio says every n number of times you get the reward. So let's say the fixed ratio is every other time you get the reward, that would mean you get a reward the first time, the third time, the fifth time, the seventh time, the ninth time, and so forth. That's a fixed ratio reward. The third category is a fixed interval reward. And here the reward is fixed not based on the amount that the person engages in the activity, but based on time. So let's say the fixed interval says the reward comes every three units of time. We look here, one, two, three. That means the reward comes right here. The reward then comes one, two, three units later. One, two, three units after that. One, two, three units after that. So you see here, sometimes, as in this case right here, the reward hit right on a time when the user was engaging in the action, but some other times it didn't. Here the reward was given right here, and the action was much earlier. Uh, that's the point of the fixed interval reward. It's based on time, not based on what the user does, but it's still fixed in some way. It's still a regular pattern when the reward happens. And then the final category of rewards are variable rewards. The reward is on no fixed schedule. And essentially, when we think about gamification, this first one here, the continuous reward, is really of the least interest. The idea that you get a reward every time tends to not feel like a reward. Uh, it makes sense. At some point, that's not going to motivate people when it's just something automatic. It's not really a reward then. Uh, it's just noticing that you're playing. The kind of fixed rewards, ratio and interval, um, have some psychological value. But as we'll see, the brain picks up on the pattern. And that tends to ultimately dull the psychological impact of the reward. Although, it makes those things easier to do in gamification because those are the classic examples of badges and quests and so forth where there's some defined set of processes or some defined set of time as we saw on Samsung Nation that then unlocks the reward. The final one is probably the most interesting. This is the variable reward. And as I said, our brains love surprises. This uh, probably comes from evolution. Our brains are evolved basically to be hunter-gatherer species. And uh, surprise, uh, something that's different, unexpected, uh, out of place with the terrain, is really interesting. Uh, and it's really interesting uh, partly because if you're a Neolithic hunter-gatherer, it might be something like a big wild animal that's going to eat you. So our brains are really good at picking out, for example, movement on a solid field. And our brains are really good at encouraging us to take a closer look at things that are somehow different. And something that is not according to a pattern, something that seems to come up randomly, fits into that category of surprise. So just based on the way our brains have been evolved, we tend to respond powerfully to unexpected and to variable schedule rewards. So then let's look at some examples of gamification rewards and how they fit on this structure. 
the Samsung Nation Hangout Quest that I showed you, the one that was uh, completion, contingent, expected reward, is also a fixed interval reward because it's about time. It's about a certain amount of time that has to pass before you get the reward, and so we would call that fixed interval. What about this one? Here's another quest that you can go on on Samsung Nation, and this one is based not on time, but the number of visits that you make to the site. You have to visit the site so many times to unlock this badge. What category does that fit under? That badge in Samsung Nation is a fixed ratio badge because it happens every certain number of times that you go to the site as opposed to being based on time. Variable rewards, as I said, are in many ways the most interesting kind of reward schedule. But there are different ways that variable rewards can be variable. One dimension, as I said, is just surprise. You're not expecting them, so therefore they feel like they're variable because you don't know that they're coming. A second dimension is whether or not they are competitive. So if the reward is based on you winning some contest, you have to have the most points on the leaderboard, or you have to beat someone head-to-head -head in some kind of virtual duel in order to get the reward, well, then it's necessarily variable. It's based on your activity, based on competition. And there are many different ways to structure competitive rewards. Maybe you're competing in a zero-sum game. One person wins, one person loses. Maybe you're just competing to overcome a certain threshold that other people have set. Uh, so there are different ways to make rewards competitive. The second dimension that can make rewards variable is how certain the reward is. If you know absolutely that a reward is contingent upon something, then the reward uh, may be variable in terms of how much that activity takes place. Um, but it's variable, it's not variable in the sense that you are certain once the trigger happens, the reward will follow. But the alternate circumstance is where there's some randomness involved. There's some level of chance. And you're not certain that you're going to get the reward even if you engage in the triggering activity. So once again, the MLB.com badges, as I talked about, those occurred not just when you watched the streaming video, but when something happened to the player that was designated in that game. So there's some randomness involved. It's not a certainty that if you watch the video that you're going to get the reward. And all this ties back to the fact that, again, our brains love that sense of surprise and they love those variable schedule rewards. So the uncertainty turns something that would otherwise be a fairly fixed schedule. Watch the video, completion contingent, complete the video, get the reward, it turns it into more of a variable reward which is part of what makes it more interesting to people. Now, variable rewards we see in lots of situations, and probably the most powerful example of a variable reward machine is this thing, the one-armed bandit, the slot machine. It's all about tangible rewards, those gold coins that you get there. But what makes the slot machine work, what makes the slot machine addictive to people, is the variable reward schedule. You never know when a reward is going to come up. And a good slot machine, or at least an effective slot machine for the casino owner, is tuned so that the reward is variable. It's random. You can't be certain exactly what is going to happen. But the reward comes just enough so that you don't give up. You play and play and play, and most of the times you pull the big handle and nothing happens. Uh, but then just before you're going to give up, you get something you get a little jackpot. And every once in a while, someone in the casino gets a big jackpot. So the idea is it's a variable schedule, a random, uncertain reward. But it's tuned so that it happens frequently enough so that the person who's playing holds out that hope. If I just pull the handle a few more times, put in a few more coins, then I'm going to hit the jackpot. And that's the essence of what makes slot machines, for at least some people, really addicting. Now, I will emphasize, as I have before, that this is not entirely a good thing. Uh, addicting people is something that is dangerous and potentially harmful to them. And while we throw around sometimes in gamification and marketing things like we want to get our customers addicted, 
uh, it's important to distinguish that from truly getting them to the point where they don't know what they're doing and can't make good judgments. And as we'll see as we get into the next section, there's some real danger of going down this behavioral path of focusing entirely on how people respond to stimuli that we put in front of them.